Hey everybody, how are you? Welcome to day four of uh, Vector's uh, virtual field trip here in Tucson. So, if you remember, if you remember, uh, we went to Pima on Thursday, and then we did Space Fest for two days. Space Fest is pretty much packing up now. They're, they're, the last day is really kind of just the wind down day. Um, not really much, not really many people are gonna be there, so we decided to come back. We decided to come back to Pima. I mean, hey, lonely guy with the 34 month resub. Thanks, man. We decided to come back to, uh, to Pima because, I mean, I, we didn't get all the museum last time, Saber, did we? Nope. No, we didn't get all of it. We got, uh, I don't know, I'd say like half. About half, yeah. Something half of this place. We got half. So, I figure let's just go around the horn again and look at some really awesome planes and really awesome helicopters. So, I mean, <clears throat> I thought that this might be the right place to start. Hey, William, how are you? I thought that this might be the right place to start here. Uh, so what, what we have here... No, no, you don't have to be close. You just have to face the camera when you're talking. <laughs> what? What are you talking <laughs> yeah, about? Yeah, exactly. Huh? Uh. So we have a, an MI-24 Hind right here. This is a Hind D variant. You can tell it's the, the Delta variant because of the, um, the bubble can canopies. The earlier versions of the Hind had this huge kind of looked like a big bay window on the front but this one is the newer version this is a newer variant this is a this is a russian attack helicopter but here's the thing it's not it's not really an attack helicopter it's like halfway in between uh the hind good time zone yeah don't forget the space stuff don't forget the space stuff really the the hinds are actually a combination of a transport helicopter and an attack helicopter it's like if you took an apache and a huey and kind of rolled them up into one. It's a very interesting design because over here we kind of separate it out a little bit. There's like, we have our transport helicopters and then we have our attack helicopters. We usually have designated roles. Russians are just like, nah, niet comrade. Combine them into one thing. So that, that, that's how you get this big honking helicopter. If you look like you got a pilot and you got a gunner right there, but you also have a hatch that can hold up to eight, eight fully loaded troops. It's pretty good. Pretty good, right? But the hind also has a lot of room for explody bits, physics packages, as we call them, kinetic energy experiments. I mean, it's it is an absolute beast of a helicopter. I mean, look at and this is just one side. It can do. It can have this all on the other side. You can have anything from. You can have air-to-ground missiles that, and like traditionally, I've seen most hinds have like rocket pods here. So just unguided rockets. Just it's like an Estes rocket with a explosive on the front. You think eight EJ-sized people can live? It can fit in these hatches? Uh, it'd be tight. It'd be a tight. It'd be a tight squeeze. Hey, creeper, what's up, man? How are you? Um, but yeah, I, I mean, uh, maybe not eight of me or Saber. Maybe like, I don't know. I'm trying to come up with a good analogy, but I was gonna say maybe eight DOS-sized people. <laughs> He's, he's not that much shorter than us, though. That's the funny part. It's like people are always like, "Oh man, you're shorter than I thought you would be." And like, if it's just both of us next to him, it's like it's just because of these two. Sorry, Das. Sorry, Das. <laughs> Ozzy, what's going on? So another another cool thing about Heinz is that it looks like it's got a wing here. The the pylon the the mount the pylon mounts are on a wing, and the reason is because this thing could carry so much payload. You could put so much payload in this bad boy. The reason, the reason it has this wing here is because it's designed to take blade load off of the blades when the hind is actually moving through the air. These actually work like wings. They take a little bit of load off the blades so you don't rip that complicated piece of equipment apart up there. I mean, you know we like swash plates and helicopters on the stream, but geez, look at that thing. Maybe we should go to the other side where the sun isn't in the lens. Sorry, I was going on just the swash plate. That is... I mean, can you imagine? Look at all the look at all those rotating parts up there. Like, all those things are spinning at crazy high RPM. Like, probably I don't know, with a helicopter like this with these blades, it's not, it's probably not above a thousand revs per minute, but it's still up there. Hey, Jazos, what's going on? How are you? Look at those things. So, I mean, you got your swash plate there. That's the bright part, the bright aluminum part at the bottom, and then you have your links up to the blades, and the blades actually can. That's what may, I mean, it makes the blades pitch, and then you can see the actuators popping out. It's a ball joint that's attached to the bottom of the aluminum right there. Can we see the F4 today? We're here the whole day. 
Ozzy. We're here the whole day. So we're going through the stuff that we kind of went through quickly because last time when we were here on Thursday, we kind of blazed through this stuff a little bit faster because the museum was closing. But we're gonna try to hit everything in one day. It's, it's gonna be a lot of work. But Saber, are you prepared? I'm prepared, yeah. Yeah? yeah. DC3 girl, are you prepared? I'm ready. She said, she said she's ready. Okay, so I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay. I won't do that again. Um, <laughs> so, 5,000 rev helicopter on Earth, the Mars copter is gonna rev at 25,000. Yeah, that's insane. Well, there's also a lot less atmosphere on Mars. Yeah, I mean, you're gonna need you're gonna need them revs. So the Heinz a pretty big helicopter, but also there's a wild cat over there. <laughs> I mean, we could... Not a wild cat, as in wild cat, but a wild. No, it's just a, wild a, space a, a cat. feral, yeah. feral cat. House feral cat. cat? I mean, I don't, I don't know. We could. Get, it may not even be feral. We could go get some fish, and then we could capture it. And we could use it to keep the creepers away. Sure. So I've heard of barn cats. I've never heard of. Boneyard cats, I guess. Yeah, but I guess they'd be a thing. <laughs> I mean, this isn't technically the boneyard, but. Yeah. Anyway, so the Hind is a big helicopter, but we're gonna go look at this one. We already we saw this a little bit earlier before, but I just wanted to touch base on how big this thing actually is. I mean, this thing is about as close as you. I mean, it's a, it's literally a flying school bus. These things are basically designed to just. I mean, this one is an MH53, so it's a navy. It's a navy one, or Marines. Marines would use this. Uh, basically to send guys out on an extremely long range. Part of like what the Pablo has, it has ridiculously big extra fuel tanks on it. I mean, and this thing, this is a big helicopter. It's not the biggest helicopter around, it's, uh, but it's about the same same size. I mean, a Chinook's about the same size as this, but I mean, this thing, the, the Chinook has two rotors. This thing has one big boy rotor up the top. Look at that thing. I mean, and on top of that, Pablo also, Pablos also have, uh, they also have aerial refueling capability. You can refuel these off of, uh, I think they use KC-130s or maybe a, maybe a V-22 variant or something later. Probably somebody knows. Do you know exactly why there was no Apollo 18? Money? That's a long story, dude. Hey, Wirelord, what's up? The monster can hold 40 EJs. Here, let's go, let's go see if we can look at the cargo bay. I mean, actually, Chad, I have a question for you. I don't necessarily know this. This conic-shaped intake on the front, is that some type of, uh, it's gotta be like a pre-cooler or like an intercooler or something? Like, is that to, does that to like charge cool the air? Like, why does it have the intake like that? Is that the radome in the front? I think so, yeah. I think so, but I've always wondered that. I never actually bothered to actually go and ask. It's for dust creeper, you would know. Just dust guards? Yeah, that makes sense. Air filter, air filter, similar to the CV-22. Gotcha, gotcha. I mean, isn't that the, that's the, that's what replaced this. MH-53s were replaced by MV-22s. Added due to Desert Storm, there you go. So, of course you have detachable fuel tanks here. And ideally you wouldn't want to jettison one of these things, but if they needed to for the mission, they could. But, I mean, it, that you can tell that this could be jettisoned because it has the stabilizers on the back. But man, that's a big freaking fuel tank, dude. Okay, Raid, it's for dust. That's crazy. I mean, I mean look at the cargo hold on this thing. This thing's up. It's locked. That'd be <laughs> awesome if we could go inside, but. I mean, it's, you know, people say like, oh, it's about the size of a school. This thing literally is about the size of a Greyhound bus. It's pretty big. Engine intake barrier filter. Thank you, sir. Cool. All right, so. Horsepower, horsepower. Right. Um, so we could go look over here. This is another helicopter that I don't know much about. We looked at it real quick last time, but it's on the opposite side of the hind over here. The size of a semi truck with a trailer? Yeah, about, yeah. It's about that size. It's pretty big, man. It's a big helicopter. I mean, the hind is huge. The hind is as big as the Pavlo, and that's something I didn't expect. I didn't, I mean, I never actually thought I'd be standing next to a hind D. This is a, this is an awesome helicopter. I love hinds. Hinds are my favorite. Just because it's ridiculous and I love it. We need a Pavlo for Kerbal Career Ops. Dude, 
you imagine making that? I mean, we could. People have done it. Raid, you've done it. I know you. I know you can make that. But jeez, this thing is. I mean, I don't see why I'd need a hind so much. I'd take the Pavlo. I don't need the weapons. I don't need the kinetic energy experience experiments. That's that's fine. Footage from Apollo 17 is much more colorful. Now, chat. Maybe you can tell me about this. This was, I guess, an experimental helicopter. Maybe you can tell me about it. This is a experimental helicopter. I, I, don't, I wasn't familiar with this until we saw it on Thursday. I didn't even know this thing existed. I mean, it is a strange looking helicopter. It's a C-37 Mojave heavy assault helicopter. This kind of looks like it was kind of like maybe a uh, an intermediary between like the Pavlo and this. This looks like it was trying to do what the Pavlo was doing, but they didn't have it quite figured out yet. Let me take a look. What do we have in here? So there's a definitely there's definitely a radiator here. And is that is that a radial engine? It it might yeah, no, it it looks like it. So this thing has like bomber engines in it. I mean, but then again, they didn't really understand that you could use a jet engine for shaft horsepower, also police cars. Um I'm trying to look and see. It definitely has the exhaust that looked like it's a radial engine, but I mean, this, look at this long freaking landing gear, man. This looks like landing gear out of the space shuttle almost, which is funny because it's not even, not even the right year, not even the right decade. It's a, it is a CH-37, yeah. I, dude, I'll be honest, guys, I didn't know what this thing was. I'm like, I don't, I straight up don't know what this is, but I'm learning and that's why I have you guys here with me. If I don't know something, you guys got my back and I appreciate that, but I mean, it's funny, like, you, like so what I was saying, you see like the meta, like they were trying to figure out how you could get a lot of cargo in this thing without compromising structural integrity in the tail or in the front. So they, they have this like ridiculous cargo door in the front. Look at this thing. It's a big old, big old cargo door and the front looks like a, I mean, the front of this thing looks like a train. It looks like a freaking train, man. That's ridiculous. You see the, the intakes, but oh, wait, Saber, look at this. Look at that. See that right there? Oh, yeah. Is that the drive shaft? Is that the drive shaft? Yeah, you gotta take that into the rotors. Yeah, so it has to be a gearbox it. in there. Look yep. at the, you can see the drive shaft sticking out. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if DC3 Girl remembers because it was hidden round back, but there's one of these at Evergreen, too. Yeah, that's what I wondered if it was the same one. Yeah. What's its name? It's us last night. Tired the tired dude. dude. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Jeez, it's a weird. I mean, it's a weird design, but this is a very early helicopter. They still didn't, still didn't really have it figured out yet. So what's the orientation of the engine? I'm not a hundred percent on that. It looks like they're transverse. The the engine, you you can kind of see it, but it looks like the engine is this way. It's mounted this way, going that way, because it's got to line up with the drive shaft to some extent. I almost took a digger, but that wasn't on camera. That's no, cool. it wasn't. You're good. All right, no, it doesn't <laughs> matter. It looks like they, it looks like they're mounted at an angle, almost. I'm looking up in it. Yeah, no, I I can see it in here. You, I don't think the camera will be able to get that, but the engine is like this. It's kind of like offset at 45 degrees, so that the the drive shaft goes in that way. Are those bullet holes? I highly doubt that. No, I don't think so. I don't think these things ever saw combat at all. But I could be wrong. I didn't know anything about the helicopter in general. Crazy, crazy design. But see, like, they have the external drop, drop tanks, like, just like the Pavlo does. So the ideas were there, but they didn't really, uh, didn't really have it figured out yet. So let's, uh, let's make our way to this guy, speaking of big helicopters. Look at this one. Who knows what this is? How's the weather down here? Yes, warm, warm, yes. warm, very warm. We are, we are weathering right now. Four CH-37Bs were deployed to Vietnam in 1963 to resist to assist in the recovery of downed U.S. aircraft. Per Wikipedia, nice. The crazy thing about the CH-54 is that they wanted they wanted to use this thing to do all just like as bare bones, like use as much for lifting purposes as possible. So there's no like cowls, there's no fairings up there. You can just straight up see the engine and the gearbox and you can even see the drive shaft 
going to the tail rotor right there. It's all, it's all just sticking out. All the guts are just kind of hanging out on the side. Reminds me of a grasshopper. Yeah, it's, I mean, this thing is basically, I mean, it's a CH-54 sky crane, right? Yeah. But it, I mean, it literally, that, I mean, that's what it is. It is a sky crane. Like if we come down here, you can see the crane. Right here, there's the main boom. And it's just, it's just on a winch. And this is, the cool thing about this is that this would be on the center of mass of the helicopter. This is the exact center of mass. I mean, you don't want to pick up something back there and have the thing whoop. And then to, to make sure, to make sure that they centered the payload, they have these auxiliary winches over here at four corners that are equidistant from the center to make sure that stuff is, uh, stays right in the center. So space engineers designed this. Sikorsky did. I mean, yeah, helicopters are complicated, man. Sikorsky has a little bit of uh, experience with helicopters. Yeah. Just a little bit. Is that a McCullough MC4 behind you? Maybe. 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 Maybe not. No. I mean, we'll, we're going to go a little bit slower this time around than we did last time. So I want to take a little bit more time with each plane because we have more time. But if you look at this, this, this area right here is basically, they basically took the controls from a tower crane and just put it right here. They put it in, they put it on this part of the helicopter, the back of the cockpit. And then this is, this is how you get in right here. This is basically a tower crane operator. There's a guy sitting in a seat right here is just, and he needs a big canopy or bubble cockpit so he can kind of look over and also be able to look down because crane, pick things up. Build one in KSP. Oh, I'd do it. We could do it nowadays, man. But we don't have a winch. That's the thing. There's no there's no cables in KSP. Well, and, and one of the one of the cool things about the controls back here that the operator would be using is that they actually have, I forget what percentage it is, but some some minute percentage of, of control over the entire helicopter's motion. Yeah. But it's it's a lot more subtle. It's not like full you know full forward to be a full yeah, you know, yeah, pitch yeah. forward move. So they oh, can actually sort of use that so to help line up. Fine control. Yeah, okay. Exactly. So yeah, the, like that that affects the swatch. Can you imagine how complicated that actually is? <laughs> a helicopter that can be controlled from two different points. That's a little. I'm gonna go with yes on in terms of complication levels. How complicated is it? Yes. <laughs> also needs viability for signaling from the ground crew. Yep. There you go. Can we go back and like? I mean, look. You you guys see these? See those? those bars that are going on the side of the helicopter you know what those are right you know what those are saber do you know what those are yeah man those are the control linkages yeah for controlling that's the, the control linkages yeah. for the swash plate it's funny to see in all this stuff external because yeah. on most helicopters it's internal yeah you like wouldn't want drive that shaft and stuff yeah you wouldn't want that on the outside yeah but i mean the turbo shaft is just right, right. there yeah just right there that's the, yeah those are the flight controls mm -hmm. those are the linkages yep it's ridiculous. They're just, they're just there. Unbelievable. Can we, like, let's go look at the... What is this fit? Yeah, go look at the front. The front generally looks like the, a run-of-the-mill helicopter, right? But look at it from the back. Oh my, it is not the same. It is yes degrees right now. Yep. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Is there now? Is there two? There's got to be two turbo shafts up there. Yeah, there is. There's two of them. Yeah. Jeez. All right. I mean, it's it's so it's so uh, utilitarian. This thing. It's just like nah. Yeah, it's not gonna see combat. Just leave leave the stuff on the outside. It makes it lighter. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm like a kid in a candy store here right now. I'm not gonna lie. But I have to come back. But I got sidetracked by Hoot Gibson. Talked for an hour and a half with a guy and gave he gave me his card and autograph picture for free. Nice. Yeah, Hoot's the man, man. I have his signature too, dude. He's pretty cool. He's got an awesome mustache. He's got an awesome mustache. A mustache game on point. Here, let's uh, let's go down the list here. I mean, say we take a see if we can take a pan shot and look at all the helicopters that are here, man. Hasu, what does the sky crane usually lift? Anything. I mean, anything that the the army needed to be moved around. Oh, we have a Humvee here, and we need to put it up on top of that hill. All right, sky crane. 
artillery pieces, uh, even some light tanks. I'm pretty sure the Sky Crane can lift a Sheridan tank. All right, let's, so let's start, I guess, with this one. Start at the top. Did you know who you are? I didn't get the chance to meet him. Shame. So this is, so the early helicopters, I don't know, I don't, the early helicopters I don't know too much about, but uh, it's, just, it's a Korsky HG5. You can still kind of see that they were kind of figuring this stuff out. They really didn't have it, the helicopter game on point until a little bit later. This is kind of a weird setup, that's for sure. What's powering this? This has got to have a bomber engine in it or something. Here, let me, I'm going to take a look. Well, it looks like this one's running on hopes and dreams. We got no engines, Ted. It's doing better than this one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that one, well, no, that's, that's the, uh, this is the stealth helicopter. What, no, it's airplane? Yeah, this is the prototype stealth helicopter right here, look. Fits so much stealth in this bad boy. Let's go back. <laughs> yeah, there's no engine in this thing. There's nothing in there. Yeah, it's just the frame, and that's about it. I don't know. It looks like a it looks like a radial engine would be in this thing, though. Why are they hiding the windows? That's a good question. They hide the windows because these windows are all like plexiglass. They're not like real glass. I mean, it's too, that real glass is too heavy. It's all plastic, but they paint over them so they don't get wrecked by the sun, so they don't get oxidized because the sun damages things. Wear sunscreen. That's basically, that's basically these things sunscreen. Don't paint yourself and expect it to be sunscreen. Anyway, so, what about this guy? What is this one? It looks like, it looks kind of like a Bell 47, but Bell HTL-7 Sioux Trainer helicopter. Let's see, what, let's see, what do we got here? Oh, huh. A Lycoming Flat 6, look at that. Piston, 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 there's more on the other side. Look at that thing. I mean, talk about exposing the guts. Just like, all right, make, you gotta make it light as possible. Don't need cowlings, whatever. I want to paint them go. Life hack. I mean, th these early, these early helicopters are something like they didn't, they didn't really figure out that you could use a turbo shaft until a little bit later. So these things were using off the shelf stuff. Like that's an airplane engine. Like for, I mean, I don't know what that Lycoming six will be out of, but I bet you it's like out of not a Cessna, but something like that. Something like a little propeller plane. They're just like, oh, Take, why don't we just take the propeller engine and put it over here and make it facing straight up? It's crazy. Went a little murky there. Yeah. <laughs> why don't we just take this helicopter engine and combine it with a Patrick meme? What? <laughs> so, actually, another thing that I wanted to that we that you look at because this thing has the guts exposed is the fact that it has a the way the gearbox is is it has two outputs. So you're taking a, like this is where on a propeller plane there'd just be a propeller engine or a reduction gear here, but if you look. The main rotor goes up, the, the engine's on the main rotor, but if you look, you see that spline, that spline hole right there? That's the drive shaft to the tail. And you can see because it lines up with the actual drive shaft. But this thing right here would be spinning when the helicopter's on. It's a drive shaft that goes all the way back. You see it's got bearings in there. There's carrier bearings there. And it would go all the way back into a little, a little teeny boy gearbox right here, right? And then, these cables right here are the flight are the control surfaces for yaw control in a helicopter and it would turn these blades you can see there's a linkage right there and it can pull and turn the blades so once again uh, i think that'd be a good time to kind of clue people in where the heck we are we're at the pima air and space museum in tucson arizona it's a it's a museum it's a big museum let's just leave it at that there's 350 planes here and it's just down the road from where space fest where more Space Fest was. So we were covering Space Fest initially, but we were like, I mean, Pima's here. We might as well go see planes while we're here. Are there any RAH 66s? I'm not sure, Forge. I'm not sure. Anyway, let's, uh, let's keep going here. Let's look at this thing. 
I don't see. I don't know much about the early helicopters. Like, I mean, you could once again, you could still tell they were trying to figure this the heck out. Where's the engine even on this thing? The intake's over here. So. There's a drive shaft in there. There's an exhaust pipe here. Uh, I don't know. I'm gonna go ahead and guess that the engine was probably in this area right here, but I don't see any intakes or anything for it, unless the intake went backwards and the engine went out here. But I mean, this is a this is an early dual rotor helicopter, so you'd have to have a drive shaft going to the front and a drive shaft going to the back. Uh, Hayaseki HUP3. There's one of these at Intrepid. In, in, I don't think it has the engine in it. I don't think it has the engine in it either. Yeah, they still didn't really have this all figured out yet. There's no, there's no door. Where's the door? There's that. Is there a door on the other side? Is this like an old minivan where there's a door on one side? Oh yeah. Okay. Here's the door. It's, in, it's also egg-shaped. Time to learn about helicopters when making them. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, so there must be a crew compartment up here and the engine must be back here. Cause I mean, look where the landing gear is. The main landing gear is in the center of the helicopter, but this helicopter is a tail dragger. So that means the center of mass must be behind the, the gear. So it's gotta be right where the, the engine has to be right here. And I mean, that lines up with the, with the exhaust. Seen any birds flying around today? No, not yet. But the day is still young. <laughs> Alright, let's see what we can do. Let's see what the next one. Jeez, look at this thing. H21? Chat, H21? I read the I read the placard. I don't know what this is. Okay, there you go. Flying banana. You okay? I'm fine, yeah. Everything's good. So this is a Piaseki H21. Workhorse helicopter. You can kind of see that this, the flying banana was derived from that thing. You can see like, okay, we have this thing, but let's change it around a little bit and do this instead. They went to a tricycle style landing gear. Here. And then you now see the door still, in, door still in the back. I wonder where the engine is. Well, actually, I mean, it's gotta be like right here somewhere. Well, there's the, hang on, here's the exhaust at the cowl. Hold on, hold on. Well, I found where it was supposed to be. There's no engine in it. Here, I'll go over here. Hi, Saber. Hey, look at this. Well, it looks like that's where the engine was. It's not there anymore, but you can still see up the very top. You see the drive shaft. Oh, wait, how does this thing go together? What were they do? What, was, what are they doing in there? I never know what they're doing in there. <laughs> Man, so there's the controls. There's the controls for the rear rotor right there, but I don't know, I don't know how this all went together. We got no engines, Ted. Do we? Do we? Oh, okay. There's the gearbox. See that? See that little, the little, the little cubby hole, right there. There's an input shaft right there, and then that white, the white, the thing that's painted white is the drive shaft that goes to the rear rotor, and I bet you on the other side of that gearbox, there's a drive shaft that goes to the other rotor. Mm -hmm. The bad banana was used in the early part of the Vietnam War. I mean, does this would this thing still have a bomber engine in it, guys? I mean, uh, like, were they still using radial engines in here? Or is this a turbo shaft? I mean, I'm, the ex the way the exhaust is positioned makes it look like it might makes it look like it might be a turbo sh uh, not a turbo shaft, a radial engine. Camera did not like being in the metal box. Oh, Got, sorry. Yeah. It's aluminum, but yeah. I mean, well, it's, it's, it's not still, the camera, it's the yeah, it's signal the, that yeah. gets affected, so. Interesting. And you can see this is all, this is all aluminum and it's painted green. This is, a, this is an anti-corrosion primer. They still put this stuff on planes to make sure that the aluminum, because aluminum doesn't rust, it corrodes. There's a difference. Rust is, rust is oxidizing differently. I mean, no rust, I mean, no. LMJ, there's no rust on these things. We're in the desert. The desert is extremely warm and extremely dry. I mean, it, you know, we're not going to get over like 300 degrees Fahrenheit here, so it's not going to melt the aluminum. So warm, dry place, you, you know, this stuff stays nice and strong. This helicopter that we're sticking our heads in is 
like 50, 50 years old, I think. All right, so let's see what we got. Let's go, let's go over here. This is an H3, I think. Well, it's a Coast Guard, so it could be an S3. Well, no. Uh, HH, maybe an HH3? I don't know. Chat, what do you think? You can see that they... <laughs> this is this helicopter is definitely from more like the early 60s, right? Yeah. yeah. The signal's definitely better out here. Okay. H3, S and R. I mean, it's painted in Coast Guard livery, but... It's funny, because you, you start to see the stuff that they added up... They, that they ended up adding, like... Something as simple as like a light in the radar in the radome, right? And this thing looks like it looks like it can float in the water because if you look, it's got kind of a boat keel thing going right there. But you see, they started to kind of figure it all out, like tricycle gear, and then it has has this thing. I mean, the landing gear can retract, and this acts as a pontoon when it's in the water. But you still see the same thing on like the pave load down there, which is a much newer helicopter than this. It's just amazing. See, I come from the salt belt, guys, up in the northeast part of the U.S. They, they were they, I mean, stuff does not last as long as it does down here. I mean, this helicopter, I mean, even look, they, they retired these helos in 1994. So that means at the very least, this thing has been sitting here for almost 30 years. It's fine to me. I mean, I don't think I'd fly in it. I'd have to, I'd take the entire thing apart and put it back together, but. All right, so we, we moved a little bit away because that's a dead zone right over there. This thing is literally that temperamental. You could take two steps that way and it'll, it'll go out. But I mean, some of the helicopters that we, we didn't see are the dual, the dual rotor helicopters, but they're dual rotors like this. Uh, you can get, you can do that, have two rotors out at the sides like this, as long as they don't hit each other. And they did that because they, they're all powered by one engine on one gearbox. And that gearbox is designed to make sure that the rotor, one rotor goes through and the other rotor goes through. And so the rotors kind of act like gears. I mean, they obviously don't touch anything, but pretty interesting design, no doubt. I mean, it's kind of a, it's kind of like a precursor to a Chevy big block. It's a great line of copters. Yeah, absolutely. And then of course here, this is when they kind of figured it all out, man. Here we go. Medevac Huey. This is a UH-1 Iroquois, or the Huey helicopter. These things was like, this is what I keep talking about. This is when they're kind of like, okay, this is how you should make helicopters. And that's basically what they did. The Huey was used for everything, particularly a lot, a lot in the Vietnam War. It's iconic for, you know, blasting like CCR and there now, there now, Charlie don't surf, that kind of stuff. There were tons of different variants of this thing. Some that are actually even still used. Uh, by the U.S. today, they uh, uh, the Marines still uh, still operate uh, the UH-1Y, the Venom, which is a really, 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 really upgraded Huey. Yeah, and it saw civilian services the 212. That's right. This one is uh, it's painted with medevac in medevac livery right here. I don't know about how far you want to go, but I mean, once again, this is what they had to figure out. There's just a single turbo shaft, the Lycoming T-53 with a differential, right? Going forward to a drive shaft to a diff that goes to the main rotor. And then over here, don't trip. There's another drive shaft that goes all the way back up to the tail rotor back there. Just a drive shaft coming out of the front and out of the back. Simple as that. Been to a great aircraft graveyard in the north of Scotland and went inside a Nimrod. Nice, nice. And that's that's the reason why I wore jeans and I'm burning up over here because I know like that'll those steel cables will tear up your shins if you're not careful. UH-1F is still used by Kennedy. Yeah, that's right. KSC still uses Huey. That's correct. TJ Jeep. Oh, Shahad, thanks for the tour through my old stomping grounds. I attended pilot training just up the road at the now closed Williams Air Force Base. Great times, great memories. Is that what the Tucson International Airport is now, Shahad? Because actually, I mean, I'm not, we're not pointing the camera over there, but over those hills, there's a bunch of C5As. I know, I know you know what I mean. Whew. It's a little warm out. It's a little, a little bit, it's a little yeah. Toasty. I'm not I'm, I mean, I'm not complaining, I like. Interesting how those common helicopters look a lot like the Kamov helicopters. Yeah, I mean, Raid, you can't like, 
everybody was looking at everybody's stuff. It was, it was like it was like Paul Walker in Fast and Furious. You just want to go scope around everybody's stuff. Yeah, Dom, because you know I can't lose again. Yeah, Fast and Furious references. He's a cop. He's a cop. He moves like a cop. <laughs> sorry. Anyway, I'm sorry. Uh, tangents. Anyway, so next helicopter, yeah? Next helicopter. All right. So check this out. Let's see. Hold on. Chad, no Williams is now Maricopa Airport outside of Mesa. All right, right on. Stay hydrated. Oh, we got plenty of water. Don't worry. I, I can't see the chat. The sun is glaring <laughs> off of it. Okay, so this, this guy right here is a Kiowa. The Kiowas were used for observation helicopters. They basically go kind of forward of like the attack helicopters and they're like, oh yeah, the guys are over there. So you're gonna want your missile to hit here. They kind of, they kind of scope out everything. What I was told, and this is bizarre. I, I actually, I know I learned this on this trip somewhere. I think, I don't know if you said it or what, but if you look, yeah, the that Kiowa me. has this right here, this thing. That was you that told me? That was me, yeah. yeah. Sabre was telling me it has this thing right here, and then it has another one right there. What are those things for? Well, for cutting cables. That's how low this thing is flying. Sabra is actually the one that told us this on Thursday. That's actually a fact that I didn't know, dude. That's really cool. Like, that's how low this thing is gonna fly that it has a freaking, like a pocket knife on the front to cut cables. And flew these, yes, that's correct. Mm -hmm. NASA astronaut Anne McLean flew these things. She flew them in OIF. So, in combat. Yeah, and we still, that's right, we still use Kiowas today. The US still uses them. I mean, once again, stand, it's, it's almost the, it's not the same. It's not the same engine by any means, but it's the same setup. You got a turbo shaft right here. Got your intakes right there. Front comes out into a diff, and it goes up there. The back drive shaft comes out of the back of the engine and goes right back to the tail rotor. But unlike the CH-54, with helicopters that see combat, you want to put something between the components that keep you in the air and the people that want to make you not in the air. Fence, no problem. We just got that <laughs> right. So this is a H-19 right here. This is a this is <laughs> kind of out of order with the rest of the helicopters. This thing is really early. There's a I know about this one. There's a World War II bomber engine in here. I think it was I think it was from a B-17, but I'm not sure. But there's a gigantic radial engine in here, and the drive shaft actually goes. Oh, dude, maybe you can see it. Maybe you can see the silhouette. You can see the silhouette of the drive shaft. It goes up between the two the two pilots and up to the top rotor. Uh, no, I can't get the focus. Yeah, you can see the silhouette in there. Yeah, see that? That's the drive shaft. And then, I, does this thing have the engine in it? Hold on. Take a look. Oh, it looks like it might be in there. Crazy. And you can see this thing was this thing would be used the winch would be used for like search and rescue the helicopter's hovering over something you need to get a person out they put the the stretcher down and or whatever you just hook yourself up and they pull you right up and go in you go in the door see s and r which is search and rescue it's not cargo on loan from the national museum of the air force interesting all right so that's all the rotorcraft that are out here, outside, I think. 